Everybody, welcome to A Cow's Opinion, the show where I give you my opinion. And look, I'm not having a great week at work. Um, I think I've posted it on our community page. Uh, my day job is being really weird about the numbers all of a sudden, not giving us enough time to handle them. And it's something that I'm really struggling. We are close to the wire, and I'm desperately trying to get it done. But it looks like today we're going to talk about somebody who's having an even worse week than I am. Because E3 may not be a thing anymore. Today, Ubisoft confirmed they no longer be hosting it. So last month, Ubisoft said, yeah, we're definitely going to E3 this year, and became the first major publisher to confirm presence on the show floor. Now, E3 has been revamped a lot due to both changing times and this worldwide health crisis that we're finally starting to come out of. So... The fact that they were the first major company to come was and say, yeah, we'll be there. Here's all the stuff we're going to have. This is going to be great. At the L.A. Convention Center but this June was going to be fantastic. Except it's not happening, actually. So in a statement to Video Game Chronicle, which is the article that I'm looking at, the company has now decided to move in a different direction and be giving the corporate equivalent of hey it's not you it's just me i'm busy or the excuses that every woman ever in my life has ever given me i'll be a big brave boy hmm. but it looks like ubisoft will instead host its own ubisoft forward live event and you can tell that this was a sudden change because that name sucks what the hell E3 has fostered unforgettable moments across the industry throughout the years. While we initially intended to have an official E3 presence, we've made the subsequent decision to move in a different direction because we think we can make more money. And we'll be hosting an Ubisoft Forward Live event 12th June in Los Angeles. We look forward to sharing more details with all players soon. Now, the organizer for E3, which is Reed Pop, has not immediately responded to any requests. But this is going to be their first physical show in four years, you guys. It's going to be running the very next day, actually, Tuesday, June 13th. And it is the media company behind PAX, EGX, and the Star Wars Celebration. These guys can put on a show. So I was kind of looking forward to see what they have, but it may not actually be possible anymore. So they have a new format. The first couple of days are going to be just business. And then the rest of the time, consumers like uh, YouTubers, bloggers, or just people who can manage to get a hold of tickets, were able to come, try stuff out, and, you know chat and text and take pictures of the stuff that they're really excited about this kind of hybrid model is what they've been going for or well, a lot more uh recently you uh you need time for the industry to like see everything make those backroom business deals but you also don't want to miss out on that sweet sweet free publicity when your five minutes of game footage can blow up on youtube twitter tiktok what have you now, Ubisoft pulling out means that not a single, as we said, major company is going to be attending. And that's not great, because where does that leave E3 if there's no major uh, publishers or console makers? The big three, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, have all confirmed they will not be at E3 this year. Which means that you can't really expect a lot of the biggest first-party games that you're going to want to play over the next year. Now, E3, oddly enough, was a staunch supporter, and their CEO, Guillemont, I apologize if I butchered your name, had expressed support. But again, Nintendo and Xbox have already confirmed they're skipping. Uh, Xbox at least is saying, like Ubisoft, the girl pull of, hey, maybe we'll see you at, at our party, because your party's just kind of blah, but our party, ho oh. ho. Now, Reed Pop is claiming that AAA companies, in addition to indie darlings and tech and hardware firms, had committed to making their return to the LA Convention Center. The full roster of exhibitors will be announced in the lead-up to the expo, providing participating companies the opportunity to make their own individual statements beforehand. Now, they have a digital week that's going to be Sunday, June 11th. It's going to have thing, big staples like the PC Gaming Show and other things such as Future Game Show, Gorilla Collective, and Black Voices in Gaming. These are a bunch of, you know, smaller but still usually pretty fun and interesting events to spend some time on. 
So, what do I think about this? Well, it's not good. There's not really any huge major publisher. I mean, granted, it's Ubisoft. We've covered on the channel how, you know, they've been postponing a lot of games and canceling a lot of games. It's not like they have a massive war chest of awesome to show off. And that may actually be the case, is that they figure that they don't have enough to warrant a huge, massive expo, but maybe they can host like a one-hour live event and show some trailers and some concept art and one or two demos. But again, the major hardware console makers are not going to be there. And things are actually getting a little worse for E3 as we look next. So, again, more stuff is coming out about E3, guys, and this is really a poo-poo thing because... With Nintendo, Sony, Xbox, and Ubisoft all dropping out, it got worse because IGN is reporting today that Sega and Tencent are also skipping. Now, Tencent's kind of, you know, they, they're really more of a publisher that brings... They have some games that are, they're starting to try to get worldwide, but they're not going to be a major huge presence. But it was going to be a big deal that they were going to be at the event. But Sega as you know, is a major Japanese publisher, and they're skipping E3 as well, which means that this event may not even happen. So IGN has been talking about various people behind the scenes of uh, publishers, corporate people, and PR firms, and apparently there's a massive lack of communication from the ReadPop organizer, which has been trying to get E3 back up and running in its glory days. And everybody seems to be waiting for, are you going to be there? I don't know, are you going to be there? It's, it's like that wedding invitation where, you know, you're like, I don't know why this person's having their wedding a thousand miles away. <sighs> I'm going to use my whole weekend. I mean, I love the guy, but is he worth a whole weekend? That's the kind of thing that's going on in the gaming industry right now. And one knowledgeable source put it ahead of the Monday news of Ubisoft's departure, saying there's no possible way this show can happen. Now, what's amazing is that usually by March, E3 is all planned out. Companies have requested the booth space, allotted their budgets, started training their demo people and putting things together. And usually around this time, we're all set and good to go and the hype train is leaving the station. That's not happening this year. And in fact, lots of people are desperate for information right now because they can't make decisions about how much money should I leave or what kind of floor booth and people are going to be there in two months. It's a pretty big deal. And that's leaving many to question whether they should skip the show itself but still make an appearance in town to meet off-site with the media who might be around. Now, why would there be media if there's no E3? Well, we looked at things like the PC Gaming Show, which is something that I always tune in just because there's usually one or two really cool things I like there. But they also people are also saying that they have more positive things about Jeff Knightley's Keeley's, excuse me, I don't know why I always call him Knightley, Play Days, which is an in-person media-only event that took place over the course of two days in June around the same time E3 and is coming again. But this is not going to be a replacement for E3. It's media only, and it's going to be a lot smaller, and it may not be composed almost entirely of hands-on demos. This is more for the media to just meet, greet, and work with each other. Now, I understand, I don't like seeing this happening, but I understand why this is happening. There was a certain worldwide health crisis, we can't say this word out loud, because then the YouTube algorithm doesn't like us, but it just wrecked everything's schedules, including probably adding a couple of years to this console cycle, just because you couldn't make consoles for a while. And it was only recently that people could even think about going to large-scale live events. Uh, I know anime cons are back, because I see my favorite voice actors and actresses tweeting about them. And even then, some of them are still saying, you know, they've got the con plague, or the slightly... So, or to somewhat worse thing about of Calm Plague after that. But this is not just a bad time trying to come off of a health crisis. Budgets are bad right now. So after all this inflation, the thing that's really in a recession right now is the tech industry because they super staffed up while everyone was in lockdown and foolishly thought that it would stay that way even when people were allowed to go outside. Look, we're not going to stop playing video games. But we are going to go do other stuff too. 
So because of this, budgets were already slashed for that thing called an event team. And now many publishers still aren't sure if they want to replenish to the pre-2020 levels. Especially when they're not sure if this is a re little recession is going to hurt their, f their budgets. And even if you wanted to come to E3 or Play Days or just LA, that's a lot of... Look, guys, it's, uh, it's financially hard. Look, I'm not trying to take a bash against any of my viewers or anyone who picks this story up uh, that lives on the West Coast. But LA's expensive, guys. LA's not cheap. So just getting a hotel room and eating and bopping around town for a couple days to see people per person going to run you out a lot of money. The thing that Reed Pop doesn't like is that all this logical stuff is fine, but a ton of uh, companies signaled initial participation and now their reluctance is not what they want to hear as quoted right here. Because Reed Pop worked with a lot of these people behind the scenes to ask, Hey, e 3 is coming back. What do you want? What is useful to you now? It's been four years. Is there some kind of change that you've always wanted to make, but they always said maybe next year that we can actually make? So Reed Pop is not happy that they put up the event and scheduled everything and got everything arranged the way these publishers and developers wanted, and they're now just not willing to jump into the pool. Even worse than that, Repop has a internal shakeup next month because per email, as seen by IGN, Lance Federsten, Fensterman, yeah, y'all gotta get better easy names for the cow. I'm stupid. Who's been the company's president for 14 years will be replaced by their current VP vet, Michael Kiskin. Both authors of this article are former Repop employees through its editorial arm, Gaming Network or Gamer Network. So just, you know, but that just means that they know what's happening. So is anyone actually going to be there? So IGN reached out to a lot of major publishers asking, hey, do you have any con plans to be at E3 or maybe anything around E3? Now, the article does want to mention that these companies did not respond in time. EA, Square Enix, The Embracer Group, Activision Blizzard, Epic Games, Take-Two, and Warner Brothers. And IGN understands that some publishers are still playing to skip, but they haven't made a formal announcement, so they're not spilling those beans. So when you say, oh, there's no Square Enix, well, we don't know that yet. They didn't respond in time. But the fact that they haven't already announced and it's the end of March is pretty impressively bad for the future of E3. Now, again, Sega confirmed it's not attending the show after careful consideration. We have decided not to participate in E3 2023 as an exhibitor. We look forward to sharing more information on announced and unannounced projects in the future. Bandai Namco declined to provide an update but did confirm it would be attending Play Days. Tencent confirmed through a spokesman that Level Infinite would not come, but it is all participated in Play Days last year and found it to be an ideal experience for showcasing our games to the media, which means maybe. Now, Devolver Digital has never gone to E3, but has always set up shop kind of in, like, nearby. Kind of like, it's a really cool, I've played several of the games for the channel here, and they're really, they, they make cool, quirky indie games. And while we always root for the success of any industry gathering that promotes great games, we have never officially attended E3 and do not plan to do so this year, unfortunately. We will also confirm we will not be hosting satellite events this year in Los Angeles, but look forward to returning to our beloved parking lot to do so if the opportunity arises for a future LACC-based event. Uh, the big, you know, uh, area that they... Want. LA Convention Center. There, thank you. Thanks, Brain. You got it, Cal. We are happy to report that we are well underway in the production of our annual Devolver Digi Direct scheduled for June, which we will share news about. It is two months to go. And there ain't nobody big promising to be here, guys. So, if you've made it to the end of this, you probably know what's the Cal's opinion. The Cal's opinion is, is this sucks. But I'm not surprised. See, a four-year absence, why certainly not the fault of E3 or its previous showrunners, has taught the industry that you don't 
need to wait all year to be at one major show for just a couple of days with only a fraction of your people in attendance. Nintendo especially is taking advantage of the new normal and now has Nintendo Directs where millions of people will watch in the first couple of hours, if not live, if you're talking about Pokemon or Smash Bros. And it is just a hugely easy way for once every couple of months or however often you want to do these media things. You do your own event. It's done for pennies on the dollar of what it would cost to go to E3. And, uh, you know, it's effective, and it's done, and it's fun, and you get the new cycle all to yourself instead of having to punch an elbow out with 300 other different developers and publishers about what games they're playing. So, and, again, Nintendo is the one I'm going to use as an example. Uh, Microsoft and Sony PlayStation stuff has not been that good, I don't think, but... Microsoft's done some cool announcements, and Nintendo's just really, really killing it. In fact, they dedicate massive amounts of times to third-party games that I just don't think that would have been noticed that much at E3. The Front Mission remakes are awesome, and they've gotten some great time on Nintendo Directs. Would they have been even noticed in a crowded E3? I just don't think so. There's nothing wrong with having a big, major, milestone industry event. But E3 2023 is not going to be that if it's hosted at all. This is... This is a chance for Reed Pop, honestly. And maybe they should think this over. This is a chance for Reed Pop to really say, Hey, maybe E3 needs to change too. Maybe we can figure out what our future looks like now. And we can... Maybe it doesn't have to be as big as it was back in 2018. What if we build it back up a new way and it gets bigger and better? And that's what I hope. E3 is a milestone massive event that still makes me really happy with anticipation. Whenever you say it. And the thought of it going away... It really, really sucks. But that is a cow's opinion. Let me know down in the comments. Have you ever even cared about E3? How about Play Days or a Devolver Digital's event? Any of these other events? And let me know if you'll be sad if EA goes away. Because it's just, unfortunately, possibly, one more pandemic casualty that we all have to just say goodbye and have all fond memories of. I am the cow and play more games because games are awesome and you deserve awesome. I'll see you next time.